first step, you're gonna to wanna to remove this panel right here underneath the climate control. So go ahead and pull it forward towards you. Next step, remove the two side leather trim panels. Next step is to remove this panel right here. You're gonna to wanna to pull it up from this side. And then there's two more clips here and here to dismount it. Not necessary to completely remove it because we have some connectors underneath it, it's up to you. But I'm just gonna go ahead and just um, pop it out for now. We have the connectors here, but again, I'm just gonna lay it off to the side for now. This step is more for your, uh, for the protection of the car mainly. I would go ahead and apply tape all around the knob so that way um, uh, it doesn't get scuffed up or anything like that because uh, after that, we're going to remove uh, this panel right here, it's an L shape, but as we're pulling it out from here, it's a possibility that that can get scuffed up or scratched. So again, my recommendation to you would just be to apply uh, tape all over it just to prevent um, an accident from happening. Next step in the process, let's go ahead and remove uh, this panel right here. You can move the shifter knob around if needed. Once it's removed, you can, uh, again, you don't have to disconnect it. You can just pull it off to the side.
Next up, again, just for the sake of protecting the uh, finishes on the car, go ahead and uh, I would apply uh, plas uh, tape on the bottom edge of this panel right here. It's really here where you need to be concerned with because the uh, brackets from the, the side brackets on the radio may scuff up um, against this. Next up, let's go ahead and remove the radio unit. There are four uh, uh, 10 millimeter uh, bolts. I think it's one, two, and then we have three and four that we need to remove. So let's go ahead and work on that. Now we are ready to actually remove the radio unit. Uh, remember, keep in mind there's the side brackets that we need to be concerned about when pulling it forward. So let's loosen it up here.
Now with the radio unit pulled forward, we should be able to work with the connections behind the radio. Next up, let's remove this uh, air vent panel right here. Uh, use a panel removal tool to uh, pry it up. It's going to be a connector for the hazard light that you can go ahead and disconnect. Next up, let's go ahead and remove uh, this panel right here that surrounds the monitor. Now this one is difficult to remove, um, but uh, it's doable. Don't worry, I'll show you. There's a total of uh, six tabs at the very minimum. And you can see that it keeps clipping back down again. Uh, the reason why is because there's two uh, tabs here in the middle. I think there's one, two, three, four. These are easy to remove. It's just the two in the middle are uh, made of plastic, uh, actually metal. So what you can do is, the reason why we remove this, let me show you real quick. All right, let me show you. Here are those tabs. There's, oh, you can't see it too well. Well, there's one and there's two. So if you push in on that center, let me show you on this side. If you push in on that middle part, right in the middle of the tab, it should release it. Let me see. Let me try to show you. You can kind of hear it click. When you do that, it should be break it. Try it again. Actually, I'll wedge this in here. up so now there's more this side is more free let's do the same thing on the other side it's that one right there in the middle just push in on it It's these two clips here. Again, you would just need to push in on the little tab here. Let's see if I can show you. 
while it's in the vent, while it's in the vent, so it can come loose. But these two are the ones that are securing everything down. You can see that the rest are uh, plastic. Uh, there's actually a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then these two, uh, one, two, are metal. Next step, let's uh, pop up the LCD screen, uh, remove these ten, this, these two 10 millimeter uh, bolts. I think uh, we should be able to lift this up. There are two uh, clips behind it, so it does move. You must pull it forward. But that will expose the two connections we have behind the monitor. With the monitor loosened, go ahead and disconnect the two connectors behind it. One. So now your monitor should be freed. Go ahead and set that aside. Let's first work with our uh, LVDS cable. Uh, you'll have the female end that connects to the original LVDS. The other end will connect to the LCD. This end right here will connect to the setup box, so let's go ahead and route that down. Next step, we'll work with the uh, monitor, the screen cable. So um, let's first uh, deal with this part here. According to the manual, this is a high type radio and it calls for gray to be disconnected and for green to be connected. So let's verify that. Gray is currently disconnected. Green is connected. So please refer to the manual to find out what is the appropriate, uh, what are the appropriate connections here. This end, the female end, will connect to the original monitor harness. The other end will connect to the monitor. This end right here will connect to the uh, setup box, the uh, carpet module. So go ahead and route that down as well.
finally let's make our two connections to the monitor so we can put the monitor back in place. We have our LBS and we also have the screen the screen cable. Now you can go ahead and set these back into place. It's now time to work behind the uh, radio. So uh, put as much protection as you can so nothing gets scuffed up. I'm using uh, a mat down here, this one, and a towel up here. I'm trying to pull it out as much as I can for you. But basically, you'll need to disconnect this one right here. It has a little uh, tab right there, so you'll need to disconnect it. Let me try to angle this. Push in on it. The tab will release. And then you can pull the connector out. That's one. The other one you'll work with not this one that follows here but the second one go ahead and undo the second one also you'll be working with these two next up let's work with uh, the main uh, harness uh, this is for again this is for high type radio uh, specific for this uh, radio that we have here so let's uh, go over over it real quick. You have two main harnesses here. This one, this one will be for the back of the uh, radio, the main plug that we just pulled out. And that second one is for the audio harness right here. Now coming off of it, we do have a 3.5 millimeter aux, but you can go ahead and tape this up because we won't be using it. We'll be tapping into aux with this harness right here. So let's go ahead and connect uh, these two uh, uh, harnesses. Let's start with the first one. Let's start with the aux. Go ahead and grab the second connector here. Connect this guy right here. Uh, apply foam tape just to prevent uh, any noise. And then connect the other end. Next, let's connect this end right here. Again, it's all part of the same cable. Connect the original OEM connector first. Like that. And the other end. will connect to the back side of the radio. Like that. Let's talk about the uh, CAN connection. Uh, on that main harness, we have these two connectors. They are labeled A and C. So for this type of radio, we'll need to have uh, these two connected like that. Uh, there is another harness in the kit. This is called the 
rocker controller cable but this is meant for Lexus RX models so uh, don't worry about this harness right here you can set this one aside it's not needed for this car just make sure you have A connected to C let's also talk about the ground wire that comes off of the main harness uh, this ground wire may need to be spliced into the CarPlay uh, USB cable that has all of these connections right here. There's one specific for ground. So again, it may be necessary to splice these two together. So uh, because if you don't, you may have some, some background noise. So go ahead and uh, get these two uh, spliced together. what the two ground wires look like when they're spliced together. Next up, you're gonna wanna find a place to mount your Wi-Fi antenna. Uh, today, I believe a good place for this Wi-Fi antenna would be uh, probably somewhere here. Or again, it's not in the way of where the two clips would go once we put that panel back on. So again, you just want to place the Wi-Fi antenna in a position, in a place where it won't be obstructed by any heavy metal or plastic. It can even go underneath the panel that goes there. But again, at the end of the day, it should be uh, it should be mounted somewhere. Let's pick let's pick a place where we will position our CarPlay USB. Uh, customers need to be uh, have access to this cable for wired uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It does help when we set up our connections for the first time. So um, you can position anywhere would you like, or if the customer has a, spe a specified location, please consult with them, uh, or customers consult with the installer in terms of where to place this. But usually, if there's a place to route it through behind, so it can come out in the uh, glove box compartment. That's okay. Uh, that another location would be where the uh, plastic uh, meets the carpet in this area right here. I know you can't see it from the camera angle, but that's another appropriate place. Uh, so for today, I'm gonna go ahead and put it over here and I'll show you what it looks like after. And just to show you, this is where the uh, USB cable ended up. Again, this is a, a appropriate location for it. Customers can connect their phone, their USB cable to that for a first time setup. But the system does support uh, wired and wireless, so it's up to the customer how they would like to run Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Let's uh, now cover the uh, CarPlay module itself. I put some foam tape around uh, just to uh, protect it, uh, leave the vents open. Uh, you don't want you do not want the module to overheat that will cause issues uh, let's talk about the dip switch settings right here uh, so uh, the dip switch settings will depend on the car uh, this is a CT 200h uh, 2016 model I believe so um, uh, and it has a high type radio so the we have the uh, joystick type controller so the default is one off. Uh, two on in terms of the screen size this appears to be like a seven or eight inch screen so three and four are both in the off position five six seven eight will be all off by default as well so uh, check the installation manual uh, to set the dip switches according to the type of uh, rate uh, type of uh, car and radio as well let's go ahead and make our connections to the carplay module uh, let's first start on this side. Uh, normally, I would begin with the Wi-Fi antenna, which is this uh, blue port right here. So go ahead and connect that. LVDS is next. LVDS is hanging out somewhere. I just saw it, it's right here. Uh, 
RL VDS connector with the two cable portion. We'll connect right there. Next, uh, let's connect the USB slash video cable. That will connect here. Next is the monitor, the screen cable. According to the installation manual, that will connect to this port over here. Like that. And then lastly, I would connect the cam power cable. Once all of these connectors are connected, go ahead and place the set of the CarPlay module in its uh, location. Uh, in here, there should be plenty of space back in underneath the radio. So that's where I'm gonna position my CarPlay module. Okay, uh, installation is finished. Now let's go ahead and uh, test the CarPlay, make sure we have the vital uh, functions working so we can uh, deliver the car back to the customer. I'm gonna be testing today with an iPhone, so I'm gonna be connecting my iPhone to the CarPlay. Uh, for all initial connections, I recommend that we use the USB cable to connect for the first time. We install our USB cable right there. So I will be connecting my uh, Apple cable to it. This is not the original lightning cable, it's just a aftermarket cable, but it seems to work okay, so I will use it for now. We'll go ahead and connect to my phone, and then you'll notice that it will start uh, charging, the screen will switch over on its own, and then it'll give you a prompt to unlock uh, the iPhone. Uh, to start CarPlay, so uh, let me go through these quick settings on my phone. It's going to ask, do I want to allow CarPlay with GP Link while the phone is locked? I'm going to press allow. And then do you want to enable wireless CarPlay? So uh, here's where the customer can decide whether they want to do wireless or wired CarPlay. As a manufacturer, we recommend wired, so we'll need to connect with the USB cable. It's a more stable connection. Wireless works well, uh, so always, there's always uh, a lot of external factors that can uh, affect the wireless connection. But for today's purposes, I'm going to demonstrate with uh, wireless. So if you select the wireless option, make sure you leave your phone connected for about uh, 3 to 4 minutes. Uh, that's uh, how long it takes for the wireless to finish setting up. I will make this note uh, for any end users where they select the wireless option. I highly recommend that the primary driver connect wirelessly and all other drivers should connect wired so that way the phones aren't competing for a wireless connection. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and use the CarPlay. Uh, for the CarPlay, uh, in terms of using it, this car comes equipped with the uh, joystick. Uh, the joystick is notorious for being very difficult to use. Unfortunately, our CarPlay doesn't make it any better uh, in terms of uh, usability uh, in order to navigate through it. So uh, let's check out two quick things before we start using it uh, I'm going to switch over to the original side let's go to setup we'll go to general and then we'll scroll down until we find force feedback I've already set the setting to the lowest you want to make sure it is to the lowest uh, you want to have it all the way to the uh, to the left. So that's one setting we need to check. Uh, let's go back. And then I'm going to press on exit. You'll notice I am navigating through it pretty well. And the reason for that is because I've already preset these settings uh, before. But uh, the two that you need to make sure they're set correctly were was uh, were the one that I just showed you in terms of the feedback force setting on the OEM side, and then here 
you want to make sure that remote lever is uh, selected under this setting here, touchpad slash remote lever. Remote lever is the one that you want to have selected here. So uh, with these two uh, selected, the CarPlay becomes a lot easier to use. Uh, you can navigate through the different options here. It's not difficult to use anymore. Uh, yes, there, the joy I can agree that the joystick could be made a little bit better to use with the CarPlay side. But for now, I'm able to uh, use it uh, for the more basic functions. So again, in terms of how to control it, I'm pressing on it this way to go making my selections that way. And then I go this way to make my selections to the left. This, think of this joystick as you being able to move only right to left, right to left. Pushing up or down doesn't really work well uh, on the on the CarPlay side. So please keep that in mind. Uh, even though it's okay here, it's not uh, the best uh, in my opinion. So again, I recommend it. I recommend usage uh, um, when you're using the joystick, uh, move it to the right and left. Think of it as a knob. You're going right and left. Uh, as you're going through the different selections, going that way on the screen or going this way on the screen. Um, to switch back and forth, you saw me press the menu button. Switch. Press and hold. Switch. Uh, let's uh, test out the reverse. Let's reverse camera. Let's uh, put it back in park. Pretty cool. Uh, let's uh, play some music. So I'm going to play some music from my phone. You can uh, change the tracks here if you wanted to. Next track, next track, previous track. Previous track can increase the volume here. So, two ways to control the volume. Second way is right here. Next track. Next track. Previous track. So two different ways to change tracks if you had to. Uh, to activate Siri, I recommend coming over to this side. Uh, press and hold that menu button here. Hey Siri, take me to the nearest gas station. The closest one I see is Valero on Red Hill Avenue. Do you want that one? Yes. Getting directions to Valero. So we know uh, Siri is able to hear me. Starting Microphone to is working fine. Proceed to Red Hill Avenue, then turn left. Sure, let's cancel that route. Um, let's see, let's, uh, um, for phone calls, uh, again, I use Siri for phone calls, it's the best, uh, to make sure that these, uh, phone calls get routed through the original Bluetooth. So make sure your, your phone is paired up to the original Bluetooth. In my case, uh, my phone is, let me just show you real quick, we'll switch back. I can see my phone is connected to the Bluetooth over there. So when I'm making a call with Siri, call 714-258-0400. Calling 714-258-0400.
you'll notice on your phone you don't have to check but you can see that it's going through the original Bluetooth uh, same thing when you're receiving calls you want it to go through the original Bluetooth so uh, you're gonna want to uh, answer calls here with the steering wheel button so to make calls press and hold that menu button right there till Siri shows up and to receive calls uh, you use this answer button here on the steering wheel both ways will force all calls to go through the original Bluetooth uh, let's test the wireless now it's been connected for a while so disconnect here the screen will go back to this uh, uh, menu over here and then once it connects you'll see the Apple CarPlay logo show up right there and then uh, that's when wireless is connected for CarPlay we'll wait give it a second There you go. Uh, so that's pretty much it in terms of testing. Uh, let's go ahead and delete our phones from here. So we'll now need to navigate over to this side. We'll go to exit. We'll go to setup. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. We'll need to go back, return. We'll need to go to CarPlay. I went too far. CarPlay, we'll go to BT Reset, yes, I went too far, see the joystick is not the easiest to use, and the reason for that is because the joystick doesn't go back to its original position, which makes it a lot harder to use. There you go. So uh, reset it from there, and then also go to your phone. I gotta lock it. Go over to your settings. We'll go down to general. We'll go to CarPlay. Press on GP Link. Forget this car. Forget. Now your phone has forgotten about the CarPlay connection to the CarPlay, and the CarPlay has forgotten about all phones. Go ahead and delete your uh, phone from the original Bluetooth and then you're ready to deliver this car back to the customer.